Welcome to the Four Listeners Program. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for checking us out this week. What up, everybody? I'm Spear, and on the mics with me this week is the Z-Man. What is up, Z? You got a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. Maybe we can make a deal. Maybe together we can get somewhere. Oh, God. Oh, uh, so... I started too high. I started too high. Yeah, again, you right? did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you nailed the vibrato, though. Oh, oh man. thanks. Oh, man. Uh, on the other mic is the mighty Gantor. What is up, Gantor? Fucked up my Achilles. What? Bad. What'd you do? Yeah, I tore the shit out of it. What, what were you doing? Were you running from like a lion or something? No, I was coaching little girls. Coaching little <laughs> girls. Uh, it hurt. uh, 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 hurts pretty bad. It hurts pretty bad? A little bit right now. Totally. Are you self-medicating? No. no. Are, you, are you eating ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> I'm self-medicating with food. I ate about half a bag of M&M's coffee nut. M&M's. <laughs> Coffee the nut bag. I don't, I don't even heard of those. Are those real? Oh, they're deli- They're they're crack filled. Wow. They're awesome. It's so delicious. It's so delicious. I feel disgusting. <laughs> oh, this is this is gonna be a show filled with self loathing. It's gonna be great. Uh, on the other mic is uh, a guest helping us tonight. Uh, please welcome to the show, John. What's up, John? What's up? Not too much. First time caller. First time. Uh, first uh, first time. Long time. Good job. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, this it's week. Type of crowd, I like this. I know. Uh, this week, uh, something must be done about what? Motorsports? NASCAR? What are we saying here? Let's go with motorsports. Motorsports. Like generic. Motorsports. Um, John, you are a participant in motorsports, are you not? Uh, yes, I am. You, you, you participate do... on your couch? No, no. See, that's why it gets so exciting. I have a real car, and I'm actually driving it. So, what, so will you do autocross? Yeah, that is right. That's, so I'm, that's come on, that's not racing. That's autocross. Whoa, 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 whoa! Uh-oh. Why different. is autocross not racing? Is NASCAR racing? It's like saying you're in the army and then finding out that you actually just LARP. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not even like like modern day LARPing. It's like you're like a Revolutionary War. Um, what do they call them? You're you're calling re-enactor. him a reenactor. Calling his yeah. car a, a foam sword. <laughs> No, no, no! I'm sure I'm there's just some. Saying, you say you say you're a motor, you race cars, you're a race car driver, and then it finds out you autocross in a Kmart parking lot. Come on! Uh, oh, hold on! Well, why don't we let John Whoa. talk? Wait, wait, hold oh, on! Okay. Why don't well, we I let John talk a little bit about autocross? Air base, all for this. What, what for for our fans who aren't Ganthor and aren't filled with self loathing? Why don't you tell a little, tell us a little <laughs> bit about what autocross is? All right, with pleasure. So. Sometimes it's in a parking lot, but really it's anywhere where there is some free pavement. You set up a bunch of cones, a bunch of obstacles, and you take whatever car you have, and you try and get around as fast as you can. Are you are you there with multiple cars, or is this time trials? Time trials. All right, so it's it's not, for insurance not... reasons we can't be all we can't call it a race. That sounds still sounds fun as shit, but at least you're not worried about the douchebag in front of you like cutting you off and you crashing into a wall. Right. No, the only thing I have to worry about is. If someone else ran over a cone and someone's trying to run it back into place, I have to not hit that guy. Well, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, good. Good tip. Yeah, there's well, usually about 30 seconds in between cars. Let me guess what kind of car you have. You have a Mini Cooper. That is a fantastic guess. I wish I had one. Actually, no. Not doing any of that French connection shit? Oh, those things are really fun to watch, though. Get them, get them up on three wheels. They do a little tripod. Oh. <laughs> three wheels? Yeah, you ever seen a Mini go around a corner? Uh, apparently not fast enough to go on three wheels. Oh, you got to try it. Look it up. Uh, it's beautiful. Right. And hilarious, like a dog, you know? Like a dog peeing uh, on a fire hydrant, that kind of shit. Peeing on yeah, a cone. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a little cocker spaniel peeing on a cone. So what what drew you to autocross? How did you how did you get involved? I mean, how does one get involved in motorsports? That's a good question. Actually, that's a pretty good story. I was still in college. I actually just graduated. It was my first job outside of college, and I had to hire my first part-time employee slash assistant and he ended up being this like 40 year old guy who already had his own company he just looked for something to do on the side and he drives he was driving an old bmw m3 and he's like yeah you want to come drive with me sometime i was like what next thing i know we're both going to a two-day track day at watkins Glen international racetrack which is not an autocross this is a real like formula one course so you got to drive on that course I did. So at the time, I was driving a it was a 2007 uh, Volkswagen Jetta. 
right? Nothing, nothing crazy. It's a family sedan. <laughs> and you push that damn thing to its limits, I imagine. I How's... almost murdered that poor car. How... <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, so it's two days, okay? So day one, slowing down from 120, because trying to slow down to 60 for one of those, you know, hairpin corners, I ended up completely smoking the brakes by the end of the day. <laughs> they have superheated so much, they crystallize like ceramic. I... The next day, I had to end up, I had to change them out myself on the track. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was fun. Going over borrowing parts from people, borrowing, like, oh, can I borrow your jack? Quick, I got to get out there. Oh, like, my. I was my own pit crew. Oh, get the fuck out of here. I know, right? I learned a lot that day. Yeah, I imagine you did. <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the entry fee for something like that? So for a track event, it varies, but you expect about between two, $300. For the whole time or per race or for the whole time. So okay. again, so what I did, it was a, a two day like learning experience. So I take my car, but I get an instructor. He'll take me out with his car, kind of show me what what to look for, what to expect, and then we do the same thing with my car. I could give that a shot. That sounds like fun. Well, so this is that is a lot of fun. Wait, but don't you not have a car, Z? I have a car. I've got a I've got a 2004 uh, Toyota Camry. Wait, really? Yeah. I don't know why I thought you didn't have a car. I don't think that car would last like two turns on, on a course it like never this. <laughs> Toyotas do not die. I got 160,000 on this thing. It's, it's, it's solid. When's the last time you've driven it? Uh, maybe like four weeks ago. I don't think that car would make it a turn and yeah. a half <laughs> on a course Actually, like this. Zeph, Z-Man, you know what you got to do? You got to enter into a rally cross. Oh, What's that? Oh, shit. I know. This gets even better. Is that so when I get to drive cross, on real streets? Yeah. No, no, no. The rally cross is it's an autocross except it's in a field. Oh, I've ri- I've taken my citation out on a on a on a field on a hay citation? field. Citation. I used to have a, a, a geo citation. Yeah. Oh my good god. A geo. Or, or Chevy, Chevy. Sorry, Chevy citation. Chevy, Chevy citation. How long did that thing last? Out on that the... thing lasted a long time too. In the field one. that day. Called, uh, yeah, well, we we went out and did like like three or four donuts, and then kind of rolled around and drove drove around. It was fun. I got video of that. Holy shit! That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. I called I I called that car sticky. Your car's so cute. Your little Chevy <laughs> Citation. So it's adorable. It's adorable. Yeah. Like I would, I would be much more interested in doing like the in like the. The indie racetrack with maybe a you know a fast car of some sort or, or or what have you. Not my car. I wouldn't do it with my car. I have a I have a pretentious German luxury car. I wouldn't use mine. Um, but <laughs> but You'd be I very would, out of place. Yeah, I, I would um I would uh, I would do that rather than the NASCAR thing because what I think I, as fast as you could go with one of those 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 NASCARs, the stock cars, it's you're going around in circles. I mean, literally, you're going around in circles. Like, how? I don't, I don't get the NASCAR phenomenon. I get, I, I, I get IndyCar. I, I can, I can, you know, I can grok your, your autocross thing and the, you know, the, the thrill of the speed and the stopping and the skill it takes to navigate the, the turns and the curves. I don't fucking get NASCAR under any circumstances. Does, does anybody want to try to explain it to me or anybody listening? You don't like going fast. Fast is fine, but these are supposed to be like some of the best drivers in the world, and all they're doing is turning left for three and a half hours. But so here's the thing. Like you said, three and a half hours, okay? Those cars are wicked loud. There's no AC. They're generating a lot of heat. It is exhausting. Whoa, oh, God. Whatever. Look, you want to <laughs> you wanna make a three and a half hour ride grueling? Put a kid in the back of the car who's hungry and has to pee, okay? Anything other than that is fucking bullshit, all right? <laughs> dude, I would take that. That would be easier. No, fuck that, dude. D- dri- driving around in circles for three and a half hours is not interesting to me. You want to make it challenging? Put a kid in the back seat. Until then, fuck those guys. And don't give me that athletic bullshit either, okay? You can't tell me that that either NASCAR drivers or golfers, for that matter, are athletes. I won't deny that they are in phenomenal shape. I won't deny that many of them are athletic. But there is no way on the face of the earth you are going to convince me that they are athletes and that it is a sport. I will fight you to the death. Well, now wait a minute. Is chess not a sport? Chess is not a sport. It's a game. Oh, my God. 
Chess is a game. Yeah, these are all technical love, things. I'd like to see you last a half an hour in a race car going in circles before you your your arms give out. I'm not saying that you don't need to be strong or don't need to have strength or have you know have special skills. Isn't that part of being an athlete? I'm saying you're athletic, but you're not an athlete. Athletes have finely tuned bodies. They can do feats of strength. They can do acrobatics or, or what have you. These guys are they're, they're not even sitting there strapped into the fucking chair. They're not going they're not anywhere. Me. They're not so going anywhere. How's that anywhere. different than baseball? Like... Baseball yeah. involves, it involves running. It involves hand-eye coordination. It, it revol- it, it, the hardest thing in sport to do is to hit a 95-mile-an-hour ba- a, a fastball. Oh, that's, that's bullshit. If baseball is a sport, NASCAR is a sport. NASCAR is not a sport. Have you ever seen baseball? They're standing there the entire time. They're not standing there the entire time. They're always moving. The batter is moving. The 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 pitcher is moving. They're, the outfield, the fielders are moving. Very slowly. Very slowly. I always feel and like they, and they get, and they get and they get like a two minute break between having to move. I you there's we can do this all night, but there's no way How you're going to convince me that, that you can you can tell me you can tell me that they're athletic, but you can't tell me that they're athletes, and you can't tell me that it's a sport. You're driving in a car. I can drive a car. I, you know, like I, I, I draw the same parallel. Anything that you can, like, like golf is yeah, the same and, thing. And you can, and you can play baseball too. That doesn't mean you're any good at it. If you can roll out of bed, <laughs> if you can roll out of bed in the clothes that you're wearing and walk out onto a golf course and start playing golf, it's not, can, it's not a sport. It's you a can game. Roll out of bed and play in baseball in the clothes you're wearing right now. No, you can't. Why not? You can't roll out of bed and play baseball. Why? Because you'll pull something. You can't roll out of bed and play baseball. Well, that's because you you're out of have shape. You not, have you not seen The Sandlot? I've seen The Sandlot, yes. You can roll out of bed and play baseball. Okay, fine. The, you, you will not convince me that NASCAR is a sport. It is it, a game at best. Golf is a game. Chess is a game. It is not a sport. But aside from all of that, what's the allure? I mean, people sit and watch NASCAR on TV for three and a half hours. What are you watching for? Crashes. Crashes. Fires, explosions. That's it. I mean, there's no other, there's no other rational explanation for it. The positions... Well, now, the other thing is, if you watch it enough, it becomes something like ballet, where you can kind of see what's going on, maybe you even appreciate it. It's the same thing for me in soccer. I don't understand how someone can watch a game for 90 minutes when nothing scores, and it's just them pushing a ball back and forth up and down a field. Yeah, I can't watch soccer either. I, but you're saying soccer's a sport? I'm, well, I'm saying soccer's a sport. I'm saying it's not the greatest sport to watch on TV. <laughs> the experience at a soccer match is considerably different. You know, the singing and the partying in the stands, it's much different. And I'll get to the NASCAR thing in a second. But the the TV experience for soccer, it pales in comparison. I, I don't know. Ganthor, you go to soccer games. Can you can you draw a parallel between the TV experience versus the the live experience? It's the same with all sports. The TV experience is much better because you can pause it and you get multiple vantage points and you get replays. Much better. That's not... Oh yeah, yeah. So you're so you're saying that you would rather watch soccer on television? Yeah, I get to understand what happened with the call. I can see it and judge it for myself whether the referee was correct or not. So it sounds it, like you like to be on the couch. It's, it's much better <laughs> watching on television. Uh, see, your viewpoint I... is better. Your perspective and vantage are better. Everything's the only thing worth being at the stadium for is to be with the crowd if it's a good crowd. Cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. Well, for cheerleaders football, aren't that attractive. For, for, for football and basketball, maybe. I don't, they don't have cheerleaders for soccer. I mean, the fans are the cheerleaders. I mean, they're like the fan section, like the Sons of Ben at the Philadelphia Union with the, with the singing and the chanting and the what have you. It turns into a whole experience. You get caught up in that kind of stuff. There, there's at least a parallel I think you can draw from soccer to NASCAR in terms of live events. Has anybody ever been to a, a NASCAR live event? I've been to um, a demolition derby. Yeah, but that's different than that's different than racing around in a circle too, right? Because you're watching things crash. I mean, they're right, you know, that's, intentionally that's crash. That's more of a show. You're, you're yeah. watching something be done, like monster yeah. truck racing. Yeah, I mean, John, though you you made a you made a you go to these racing events. Do they? I mean, does it turn into something of a party? Because the way the way I understand it, I've never been to one myself, but I've seen I've seen these these NASCAR uh, you know coliseums. Like the the raceway at Dover in Delaware is enormous. Like you can fit like 120,000 people, and they they oh, set exact. up they set up on the infield um, with like campers and and all kinds of other stuff, and it's a party like right in the middle of everything. 
Have you ever yeah. been? Have you ever it's, been to something like that? It's no like different that? than tailgating when you're going to watch, you know, the Patriots or something like that. But the only difference is that you're tailgating inside. Exactly. You're even yeah, closer that would be to the action. Wouldn't that be amazing if they would let you do that kind of stuff, like on the sidelines of a, a football game? Yeah. Right. I mean, you can like set play up... some cornhole and yeah. you can drink flame washers and shit. Yeah. Now that I could get into, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> at that point, you're you're probably less interested in the cars going around in circles than you are in hanging out with your buddies, drinking and just parting your face off. <laughs> Fuck it. The only thing anybody cares about is the crashes. That's it. Yeah. It's the same reason why you have to stop and slow down when you see a crash on the side of the road on your commute to work. It, that's it. It's the morbid curiosity with watching something crash. Especially if it catches on fire. Especially if it catches on fire. Or it flips in the air and there's parts everywhere. You know, I mean... That's... You want it to be a bad crash, you just don't want it to be a, a, a fatal crash. Yeah. Yeah, d- crash, but don't die. <laughs> it's like when you're rooting for fantasy football. It's like, I want my team to win, but only if this player gets this point, the other player gets this point, and <laughs> yeah, this right. guy gets that point. Yeah. I, I mean, but that's what, they, that's what they say. Rubbing is racing. You know, it's all about, you know, bumping what? in the people. I'm sorry, what? That's what they say. Rubbing is racing. Because it's oh. a. Rubbing is Rubbin's racing. Rubbin's racing. Rubbin's what are you racing. Rubbing? Rubbing. You're, rub- you're rubbing cars. You're bumping the cars into each oh, other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they want to see it. They want to see the contact. They want to see the, the danger, uh, the, the element of danger, the element the, that at any point someone going you know 200-something miles an hour can crash into a wall. Hmm. Yeah. We'll put you on edge. I mean, Ganthor, you, you agree with me on that one? I think that it's like a hick version of what's the, the Preakness or something like that. They go there to get drunk. Redneck and Derby. Drink, and Redneck drink Derby. beer and watch some racing. Watch some racing. So it's no different than going to a baseball game. <laughs> well, I mean, in a baseball game, I don't think you're rooting for someone to get hurt. No, but you're there to drink and eat peanuts. Right, but the, there's, a, there's a subtlety here, right? I, I mean, you can go to any sporting event to drink and hang out with your buddies. But here, with NASCAR, I'm suggesting that the difference is that you're going to hopefully see something dangerous happen. Well, you're, you're hoping to see something interesting happen. Right, so you're not hoping that anyone dies. You just want to see what's going to happen. Right. If you see someone do that thing like where they actually do come from behind and it's an amazing come behind victory or they somehow were able to squeak away, squeak away with a win at the last second, that's still interesting. It's the same thing as like, you know, the come from behind victory in a, in a football or baseball game. Or you see someone with an amazing catch or you I mean it's just do you go to football to see an injury? No. Nor do I root for one either. Even when you're playing Dallas? Even when I'm playing Dallas. <laughs> I don't root for anybody on on the Dallas Cowboys. What if Cowboys it's uh, Tony Romo? I, well, Tony Romo is out of football now, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I said, "What if Jackass?" <laughs> I don't actively root for anybody on another team. Okay, you could admit it. I don't root for anybody to get hurt. I, I would I would prefer to see the game played at its highest level and and enjoy the game for what it is. But see, that's no different than a NASCAR fan. They're just chilling. They're having beers with their buddies, and they're watching the game. So when you watch, so do you watch NASCAR races? I don't watch NASCAR, but I, I will watch uh, Formula One. Okay, well, at Formula One, I, I think has a, a little bit more of an element of intrigue because there's there's much more going on in terms of how the cars are making their way through the course. You know, I talk about element of danger at any turn, literally at any turn, they could crash into something. The degree of difficulty, I think, is jacked up. I would actually argue that that's no different than in NASCAR because, like I said, there's, even though it's one turn in NASCAR, you're still trying to navigate this turn. And you have set yourself up to go through that turn on a specific line, right? This is your plan, and if you follow this plan, you're going to end up ahead. However, you have to compete now with everyone else, and they've got their own lines that may interfere with yours. You've got to manage that. So you're saying it's, it's still basically the same approach to racing, just uh, a, different, a different venue. Exactly. So – Think of it like when the cars are all the same, then it comes down to the driver's skill. And so now everyone's on like a simple, simple track. So you've almost completely removed the track as a part of the competition. You're talking strictly who is the best driver. That's well, very specific things. But it's that's also very boring. That's it's also what very different boring. formula series are for where every driver drives the same car. Nobody right. likes that. I think it's right. a better... Like be able to celebrate the brand of car that they grow up loving or have been indoctrinated into like Chevy or Ford or Toyota or Dodge. It's all bullshit, but it's just tribalism. 
I was deep. That's man. half the fun. So is rooting for the Eagles. You got your tribe. Well, that, I mean, that's the that's the interesting thing too. Is that NASCAR and in and, and IndyCar too? There's do you root more for like the driving teams or the, for the individuals for the individual drivers? Definitely for the individual drivers. It depends. So do you in Formula would, One? I root for Ferrari. But then they got drivers that I didn't like, so I stopped rooting for a Ferrari and I started rooting for somebody else. So your loyalties end up being a little bit more transferable to the drivers. It depends. If I like the drivers for the team, or more, or more accurately, if I don't hate the drivers for the team, then I'm okay. Yeah, I think more than more than other sports, the NASCAR or even IndyCar scenes are more geared towards the drivers and the personalities of the drivers, than, especially in NASCAR where most things are equal. You're not you're not really rooting for like Joe Gibbs racing. You know what I mean? You're you're rooting for the drivers in Joe Gibbs racing. Right, definitely. It's the personalities too, like the the Jeff Gordons, the Dale Earnhardts, the the, the Richard Petties. Like these are the you know, like the the bigger personalities, the bigger known names. Is that stuff scripted? You mean like pro the drama? Wrestling? Is that like pro, yeah, like, like pro wrestling? <laughs> I mean, like the, the, pretty, uh, the fights and the feuds afterwards where they get out of their cars and start fighting with each other. <laughs> yeah. Or is that pretty, uh, pretty just regular, like normal, normal res- response and action? Oh, that is definitely not scripted. I really? mean, it happens. Absolutely. And if you think about it, you know, you are racing, you are pouring your heart and soul into something and then someone cuts you off at the very end. You're going to get pissed. Yeah, shit. I get pissed when I get cut off on the highway just driving to work. Like yeah, only, and you're not, in, and you're really not in any hurry to get there, right? Yeah, <laughs> so I can only imagine. I can only imagine what it's like if I'm getting constantly cut off for three hours. Oh my god, I can't imagine what kind of like mental condition I would be in getting out of that fucking car. Now, now it all makes sense. <laughs> all right, bring us out. Uh, a- anything else we want to add to this? Um, if you have a car. Go race it somewhere. Have fun. Not on the public roads, please. There are, you know, old ladies like Spears' mom. We got to take care of her. Oh, dude, that's not cool. Fuck you. All right. She's a nice, beautiful woman. <laughs> All right, fine. What did we learn? Except for that bullshit. What, <laughs> what did we learn about motorsports, about NASCAR, about my hatred of all things driving around in circles? What did we learn, Z-Man? Uh, the citation, uh, Chevy citation is a, is a, is an awesome car. It's adorable. It's so cute. It's super adorable and very versatile. It's adorable. Well, that's fine. Gantor, what did you learn? That you're a sports bigot. I am. I'm absolutely a sports bigot. That's fine. That's why I live up here in the Northeast. It's all good. <laughs> John, what did you learn? Oh, geez. Chess is a sport. Chess is not a sport. It is. It is not. That's another <laughs> show. <laughs> That's an entirely <laughs> other show. Uh, what did I learn? I learned I don't like things going around in circles for three hours. Uh, I learned that uh, autocross is not to be mocked just because it gets it 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 gets done in a Kmart parking lot, Gantor. And, and I learned that uh, well, that you can do phenomenal things with a Volkswagen. I bet Jetta. you he's raced in a Kmart. <laughs> I bet you he hasn't because there's no Kmart's in the <laughs> yeah, right, there's no, area. No <laughs> Kmart's. <laughs> So if you've raced in a Kmart parking lot, why don't you let us know on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash four listeners or four listeners.com. You can check out the show on Stitcher Radio, on iTunes, or on Google Play. Just search for four listeners and we'll pop right on up. Or you can give us a tweet on the Twitters at four listeners. Thank you, John. You have been a wonderful guest. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. My pleasure. And we thank all of you for checking us out this week. And we hope that you will check us out again next week. Thanks a bunch, everybody. You get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. Maybe we make a deal. Maybe together we can get somewhere. If you take, let's take Ganthor, for example. Let's take Ganthor, for example. And let's put him in a real, like, stock like race car we're talking roll cage nothing else thousand horsepower what's he gonna do he's gonna shit his pants <laughs> he's gonna shit his pants or he's gonna kill himself he doesn't even know how to drive stick oh well, then that's he's not true well, that's probably better no leave him in a pit why are you guys not he's gonna burn out that the i'll clutch. set the course record on what
You don't think I did, I I didn't grow up playing Gran Turismo? Come on! <laughs> I don't think those skills translate. Nah, you, grew, you grew up you grew up playing Atari pole position. You had you had low gear and high gear. Oh man, dude! I played every game. Dude, I don't think your I don't think your skills with like the Wii wheel are going to translate to <laughs> being on a like a racetrack. There's no force feedback on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. There's no like. Yeah, there's an accelerator, not an accelerometer. It's a big difference, buddy. 